Today in OpenFront.io, we're going to be answering five important questions about the deadliest weapon in the game. So to get us started, my first question is, how much damage do MIRVs actually do? We all know that MIRVs are devastating. They destroy most of your territory, a ton of your infrastructure, and decimate your population. But the question is, how much do they reduce your territory by, and how much do they reduce your population? So to test this, we're going to have Bombardillo Crocodilo fire a MIRV at me. And how we're going to evaluate the impact is we're going to take note of my current population at the start and my overall land. And as I don't have any cities, this will give us an idea of the overall damage inflicted. We're also going to do this a few times just to see if there is any variation and potentially try some different maps. So the findings are pretty clear. If you look at the population destruction of the three maps that we tested, it's very evident that MIRVs get rid of over 99% of your troop count. And if you look at the land destruction, it's also pretty consistent that we have between 52 and 55%. The whole reason that I think we see 52 and 53% on Europe and Faroe Islands is just the increase in coastlines, which potentially means that some of the MIRVs hit the water. So now that we know that MIRVs take out about 50% of your land and almost all your troops, this brings up another question. Can you dodge a MIRV? In OpenFront.io, the common strategy when you get MIRVed is just to full send the nearest person nearby to one, hopefully take most of their land and also use their troops before they disappear. But I've come up with two other strategies that we're gonna test in comparison with the full send strategy. So the first strategy that I tried was the boat escape strategy. Basically just sending a boat right before the MIRV hits. And I was not hopeful. After the bomb started dropping, I saw that the boat was reduced to a really low number, but I kept waiting, and to my surprise, when the boat landed, it had all the troops still in it. The first thing that came to my mind is this has to be a bug. I just attacked Wilderness, and maybe it's different if I attack a player, a radiated land, or a bot. I tried all of these, and it worked every time, and this is what I thought. <laughs> That's so bullshit. So effectively, you can just dodge MIRVs and maintain all your troops. This is pretty much an exploit, so I guess you get to use this for the next day or two just to completely dodge everything. Besides this, the other strategy I tried was retreating. So in open front IO, you can retreat from an attack. It takes two seconds and you lose 25% of your troops, but I thought maybe this is a way that you can get around losing all your troops. I tried it, I think it's difficult to time, it does not work. The other strategy I tested in this video was just full sending. This, I would say, wasn't really effective because I didn't have that many troops. But what you can see is that there's a small area of land that I took in this example that wasn't MIRV, which I think happens in the type of gap between the bombs landing and still expanding even with you losing all your troops. So what I'd say is for the next day or two before this is patched, just dodge the MIRVs with a boat. But bigger picture, I would probably just use your troops before you go down once this gets fixed because we know now that all of your troops are done with MIRVs and if you take that kind of extra portion of land, especially if you have a lot of troops, you can potentially maintain some of your infrastructure. So the third question I have deals with doomsday scenarios. So in games where there's lots of people who have millions of gold, what I'm curious about is if it is better to send two MIRVs at once or spread out MIRVs. So to test this, I just did a double MIRV scenario and compared the pre and post results of land and troops. In terms of the initial finding, things made sense. The MIRV got rid of all the troops and it got rid of a little over 80% of the land, which kind of adds up with the little bit over 50% we saw in the other scenarios. But things got a little bit confusing with the second test of two MIRVs spaced out. What was interesting is that the first MIRV on the Britannia map, it did over 70% damage, which is a 20% increase from the other maps. Then the MIRV after that only did a small portion of damage, potentially because it was just difficult to target all the patchy areas of land that were left. Just comparing the results of both tests overall, it's fairly similar, but I think there's more questions regarding why the single MIRV did so much damage. For implications, I think this shows you that probably sending two MIRVs could be overkill in some scenarios, but it also suggests there are questions regarding how much damage MIRVs do to your territory. Moving on to the fourth question, I'm curious if MIRVs can miss. In Open Front IO, we all know that borders move, and it's possible to make mistakes with different types of bombs, but I want to know if this is doable with MIRV. So to figure this out, I did a number of tests. The first of which involved launching a MIRV at someone and then taking them out completely. And as you can see by the results, it was very odd that just one random MIRV missile hit. But I thought maybe there's some type of difference if someone else launches the MIRV. So I repeated the test and had another person launch the bomb. In this test, 
as you can see, the exact same thing happened. So my general conclusion is MIRVs always target the person who you launch the bomb at. What I can say though is if you launch a MIRV at someone and you attack them at the wrong time, you can eat some of the MIRV missiles. My general impression is, is that once the skull bomb disappears from the map, that is what the MIRV is going to target. So if you are going to try to take someone who's being MIRV, you got to watch out. So for our final question, we are going to try to figure out if you can defend a MIRV using SAMs. In a recent OpenFront.io update, the developer has told us that SAMs now defend from MIRVs. But the problem is I've played all these games where I put down like 20 SAMs and they seem to do nothing. So really what we're going to try to figure out is how many SAMs do you need to defend from a MIRV? So to guide our investigation, I have made this chart which shows us how much each of the SAMs cost and the equivalent number of MIRVs you can send. So we're going to be starting from the bottom and working all our way up to 1,250, which is almost 4 billion gold. It is the equivalent of setting almost 150 MIRVs. The first test I decided to do was five SAMs because I've seen enough games that one SAM doesn't really seem to do anything. Looking at the results of this test, one SAM survived, but I pretty much just consider that luck. For the next test, I put down nine SAMs just because this is pretty much the equivalent of what a MIRV costs. And again, we saw failure even with nine. I then decided to bump up our SAM total all the way to 25. And this time we finally had success defending a small area of land. So I kept going with the test and push up the total SAMs number to 50. What I was hoping to see that with 50 SAMs, I would be able to defend a much larger territory, specifically a place where you could stack cities and other important buildings. But to my surprise, the territory wasn't that much bigger. There was more of a strip of land, but I felt like this was just a coincidence. So I kept going and pushed this stack of SAMs all the way up to 100, which for reference is almost 300 million gold and 12 MIRVs. And the results of this test mirrored the the other ones that only a small area of land was protected. And this got me thinking that my initial test might not have worked because it seems like even with a lot of SAMs, they're only defending a really specific area. So I went back to redo my test to figure out how many SAMs do you need to defend a small pocket of land? For the redo of the five SAMs test, I saw that this failed. Even though that two SAMs were able to survive in the pocket, I felt that this was just luck. And if the MIRVs are getting this close, thinking of the random factor of sometimes MIRVs will target different different areas, five SAMs isn't gonna cut it. I then tried doing nine SAMs twice and it turned out in both occasions, it worked. And for this vid, I'm gonna leave this line of inquiry here, just because I think there might be variation depending on how much territory you have and the map in how many SAMs you definitively need to create doomsday bunkers for MIRVs. If you want me to test this further, leave a comment and maybe I can do it in the next vid. Now back to the bullshit of trying to defend a MIRV with SAMs. So I continued placing SAMs all the way up to 200 which for reference is equivalent to almost 600 million gold and 24 MIRVs. The results of this test also mirrored the previous results. A very small space was maintained around my two 100 stacks of SAMs. Moving on to the 300 SAM test, I decided to do stacks ranging from around 30 to 7 SAMs in different areas just to see how this would work. The results of this test showed that only the 7 SAM site was taken out, which also helps with thinking about narrowing the range of the ideal number of SAMs to defend against a MIRV of this seven to nine range. I then moved on to place 200 more SAMs, bringing our total to 500, which for reference is 1.5 billion gold or 60 MIRVs worth of SAMs. Waiting for the MIRV hit on my entire pocket of SAMs, I found that my area was almost completely defended. There were a few straggler SAMs probably further away from the type of stacks that I was doing, but overall, this worked really effectively. I then spent, I kid you not, 40 minutes placing 750 more SAMs as my game struggled, bringing our total to 1,250 which is 3.7 billion gold or 150 MIRVs. And this is the result. All right, everyone, I have done it. I have put up 1,250 SAMs. There are some areas that are maybe a little less defended, but we're gonna see how this goes. So we're gonna have our helper launch the bomb and see how much this can defend. So I proceeded to launch MIRVs one by one to see if this setup can indefinitely defend you. And here goes the MIRVs, all the SAMs activate. And what does this end up doing? Okay, so it looks like there's some little patchy hits in here. And that's probably based on some areas that 
they're not as they're not as defensible but interestingly enough that only took out a third of my troops it looks like we only lost about 80 ish sams so let, let's try that one more time and let's just keep on doing this until this ends for this second hit there was some patchy damage in the less defended areas and i lost about 70 sams and it was evident it was just a matter of time and a number of mervs until i went down nonetheless my doomsday bunker looked really good but this started to change on the third hit and here the sam goes and all our sams light up and our kind of central doomsday bunker right around this area is doing a little bit better or it was doing a little bit better it looks like this is slowly wearing us down for this hit we continued to see patchy damage and it became evident to me that you can't indefinitely defend with sam sites it's just a matter of time so i decided to start upping the ante to just see how many mervs do you need to take out some of these clusters so i think for this next test we're just going to try two mervs at the same time all right so here comes the double merv we're going to see how this goes i think the areas that have more concentrated stuff are just generally doing better but this looks like it's done a lot of damage yeah that's that's pretty crushing yeah that took down another about 200 sams effectively as your territory gets smaller the merv damage continues to creep forward in the more vulnerable areas this said the doomsday bunker actually was holding up really well despite what i said earlier so now we're gonna push the limits even more we just launched three mervs we're gonna see if our doomsday bunker right here and we can even we can even add one more sam just to help out we'll see if that can deal with three mervs oh my god so uh, there goes some crazy annexations, but uh, the Doomsday Bunker is still working. With the 200 Sam Doomsday Bunker holding steady, the question became, how many mervs do you need to take out this kind of setup? I guess we gotta keep on going until we, we get the Doomsday Bunker done. All right, so here comes four mervs. We're gonna see what the Doomsday Bunker can do. I think we're gonna start seeing more attrition with these, just because I think there's gonna be a lot more misses and things are gonna basically start getting flipped. But this seemed to work, so I guess we gotta do five. All right, now we got five mervs inbound. We'll see how long the Doomsday Bunker lasts. And here the mervs are falling and we see lots of Sams activating. So apparently 200 plus Sams can survive five mervs. Okay, now we got six going. You, you can see that there's seven here. I'm just uh, having the helper merv Western Australia just so they don't annex everything else. All right, so here, here we go. We see the activation. You see all of that. That is still going strong. I don't, <laughs> I think you, oh, it took out some of them. Okay, so six mervs. Six mervs is kind of pushing the limit on this. So it looks like it's around six mervs when the edges of these kinds of setups begin to fail. So I'm gonna do seven now. The other thing I'd say interesting is that this bunker has held out too, and there's these isolated patches that have just barely survived. So we'll have to see what this does. All right, so here everything comes in, and that has activated most everything. But what it looks like is that we still have some of these that are still just being safe. Hmm. All right, so I just launched 10 of these. So we're going to see what this does. The, the SAMs are already activating, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to go through multiple cycles that they're going to reset. Okay, so I think 10, 10 is how much it takes when you're dealing with like 200 SAMs in one spot. And I think... I think that's pretty much a win. The kind of funny thing about this challenge is that all these could be taken out with one hydrogen. I'll, I'll just show you just uh, just for fun because the hydrogen range outranges the SAMs. That might show you why this isn't totally viable. So you can see if I launch a hydrogen bomb right here, this will take out, this will probably take out like a hundred SAMs. So watch that. Yep, you see that that goes down to 100. So, so that's been the test. Let me know what you think. This video took a lot of time and effort. So if you want to see an episode two, post your questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.